Hopefully it's the right screen. It's this one in front of you that's uh, your investing future, yeah? Okay, thank you very much. Righty-ho, I've um, been asked to uh, comment on what I think is going on in the stock market. It's all very tempting at the moment to start piling back in. I shared a post yesterday with members of my crypto site, and I'm going to go through some of that with you. And it's all relevant to Forex as well as, and also it's relevant to what I think is the impending recession that's coming and how you could protect yourself and take some steps to do so. Good thing with trading, of course, you can make money whether things are going up or down. And you can also do that in the stock market as well, of course, because you can short these days. So this is a, a post I did yesterday. This is about talking about market melt up or crash. I need to adjust this, edit this for Mentor Pro people because some of this is uh, to do with crypto and my portfolio. And uh, this was one I posted in June and then this was another one back in May. And in May, I talked about some perspective and I have talked about this in Mentor Pro. If you want to look back at this kind of thing, I also had an email from somebody the other day saying they, they need to understand fundamentals more. Well, if you go into my blog, which is here, and go into here, you can then scroll across to see the five most recent posts. So on the 21st of July, I explained why I was buying gold and silver and where. And if those of you have been with us for years will know, I have been telling you for years that if gold got down anywhere near 1700, that was a definite buy. And we'll go through that in a little while. And then also I have been showing, well, again, I, I don't trade much these days, but I am looking to make a month's profit in less than five or six trades whenever possible. I think I did that six times last year that I shared with you. And then also here I've got Forex trades, buying gold, stocks, etc. And if you have a look back through here, you can scroll back through all of our previous posts and you can understand my thinking about the strategy about what I've been doing. I was also asked to comment on what my split is portfolio-wise at the moment. I have 25% of my uh, investments in crypto. I have 25% in metals. I then have a mixture of uh, cash, which is cash, some of which is in my private Forex account, some of which, most of which is in US dollars because I am waiting for a bigger drop. I am very wary about this current situation, this current bounce back up. And this is what I was cautioning folks about yesterday. But on the 17th of June, this is what I said to folks. And I also shared this with you in Mentor Pro in, in an abbreviated version. But I was talking then about it looked like the, the crypto winter had arrived early and the stock market crash as well. And I talked about what I was doing. I was buying small amounts. I was trading. And I also talked about that here there was a good uh, article about uh, from a lady I follow on uh, Twitter. And she said, the stock market's the only place that when there's a sale on, everybody's sad. And the way to survive a bear market is simply not check your portfolio. Now, this lady uh, is did run a hedge fund, I think 30 million. So obviously her opinions to be respected, but she is a permanent stock market bull. I am not convinced at the moment that that's the way to go. This is a guy I've shared with you before. And we'll have a look in a moment. This is Alfonso Pecatiello, Italian guy who previously managed billions in the bond market. And he does a podcast on a Sunday. It's very interesting. You should, uh, if you're into that kind of thing, you should spare some time to listen to that. And he also does very detailed reports about what how the bond market is a leading indicator of what's coming next. And he also explains to where he is putting his money. And at the minute, he's not putting in any money in the stock market. So you have the two extremes there. And I said in here, I'm kind of in the middle with all of this. But what I was saying, explained last month, at the moment now, folks need to be very careful. Don't be going out and buying depreciating assets like cars and boats and caravans and timeshare and anything that is intangible that you can't turn back into cash quickly. Because if there is a full blown recession, then will be the time to go in and buy stuff for pennies on the dollar. I also talked about folks, particularly in the UK, to consider converting your mortgage into a fixed rate. And in the UK, you could still borrow money for less than 3% for three to five years. I think it's now, well, it's gone up by another three quarters of a percent since. So that was good uh, advice, suggestion. Keep your credit rating up. Have some physical cash and gold to think about. Uh, have food in the house. If the internet goes down and China does Taiwan and all the world turns to the messy stuff, 
<laughs> I'm not a prepper by any stretch, but I'm beginning to think they're not as, as crazy as I used to do. I also converted all spare pounds and euros into USD at the beginning of the year, which has turned out to be a good decision thus far, because I have, in effect, hedged my currency account by about 10%. However, I am watching closely at the minute because we had a bounce the other week. And when the euro hit parity, I explained that although the eurozone is screwed, in my opinion, and I have been banging on about this for 18 months or more, uh, the, the chances of it going straight through parity straight away was slim. So a lot of what's going on at the minute is we're really at the make your mind up time. And I'm going to show you that in the charts in a little while. I talked about if you've got crypto, move it off the exchanges, because if the exchange goes bust, then you you become a creditor and you will end up with pennies on the dollar. And I also talked about if you're fortunate enough to have more than 100,000 euros in the bank and or pounds in the UK, it might be 85,000 pounds now, spread it around. Don't have it all in one bank because that's the limit for your guarantee. I think in the US it's $250,000. Um, if you're interested in buying stocks and crypto, Continue to place forward orders near crazy lows. So that was what I was also saying. I have been dabbling in stocks. I have also bought some crypto as well as. I was talking about uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, the main ones I showed in the video to watch. I bought some uh, Bitcoin in that week in the middle of June for 20500 And I was looking and hoping it was going to drop further to buy more. I did sell my Bitcoin yesterday. This is not my main portfolio. The Bitcoin I, I have held for the last few years is held. I am doing nothing with it. This was trading. So it made 10 or 15%. The Ethereum that I bought at 1,050, I sold yesterday for 1,650. So 60% gain. But once again, that was trading. That was not uh, selling my portfolio. Portfolio core holding. Gold, currently invested around the current price of 1840. I would consider a drop anywhere around 1700 to be fire sale territory, and I will buy more there or below. That's what it did last week, and that's what I have done. And silver, I explained I bought transfers at 20, 19 is another big level, and, and anywhere below. And I covered all of that. And then stocks. I am in Apple, and I'll show you what I'm in already, but these are. Um, Sink, sink level, stink levels. I think some folks refer to it. This was like if I, if Apple crashes, that's these are the levels where I have forward orders in Amazon, etc. I did buy Apple, and we'll look at that in a moment. I think I paid one forty and one thirty, and yesterday it was at one sixty five. Yesterday I sold half of it, and again, again because I'm not convinced. So these are just crazy levels. If we go on to a, a big bad drop. And then yesterday, I say, I will edit this post and I'll show you, but I'm going to go through a lot of this with you now. I've just shown you my where you can find out my old stuff. Uh, news, you've got to keep up with the news. And Twitter, I am paying a lot more attention to Twitter. And thankfully, I did, because this week, the uh, Forex factory had German retail sales as yellow flag, not important. Well, German retail sales this morning, thanks to Reuters, came out and they explained that this is the biggest, uh, worst slump since 1994. When you consider that German bonds are now paying negative, and that's another one I've shared on here, 10-year German bonds yields have fallen to less than 1%. Again, real yields, 10-year bonds less inflation dropped to minus 6.8%. So if you want to tie up your hard-earned money in German bonds for the next 10 years, you are currently running at a deficit of minus 6.8%. Makes no sense at all. So what you have to do with things like this is, A, always be aware of the other person's point of view. I was trying to find this morning, there is a guy who was on a wealthy and video about six months ago, and he's on Twitter as well. He's of the mind that this is going to be a melt-up. He thinks that we're going to see new highs in the stock market. I don't see that, but I am listening to his opinion. Uh, and again, I showed you earlier the, the difference between Genevieve and Alf's opinion on what's going on. But yeah, what you have to do is keep your eye on a drip, drip of what's going on. And this is a further drip, drip. You've got Germany, the, the powerhouse of the Eurozone, is now on the verge of recession until they change the definition. Uh, which you can't make this nonsense up with what the US are doing at the minute. Um, but now if German folks are not spending money, the Germans are far more likely, who goes with us this morning in Germany, 
he will confirm the Germans are far more into saving money and not using credit as opposed to those down in the south of the Eurozone. Uh, I'm in Portugal at the moment, been to the beach this morning. Uh, <laughs> you watch folks down here, they're putting in a full shift. And it was the same when I lived in the, in the Canary Islands. When the sun shines, hey, <laughs> life's for living. Uh, but on a serious note, if Germany is on the verge of a recession and think, and they are the ones that funded the pigs countries. Italy is on the verge of bankruptcy. In fact, Italy, I'm quite convinced, is technically bankrupt if it wasn't for all the money that's been slipped their way. So keep your eye on, if you want me to do the work for you, keep your eye on my Twitter feed and also have a look at what other people are saying and just be careful who you follow. But I say I spotted that this morning because I don't normally pay attention to yellow flag news, but this is what I'm getting at. Keep your eye on this drip, drip of what's going on. And generally, anything going on below 50, when it comes to PMI figures, etc., is seen as a negative. So above 50 indicates industry expansion, below indicates contraction. And Italy, unlike Greece, is far too big to fail in the Eurozone. And I have talked about this before, structurally and issues with the banks. The pensions were, were sliced in half and have never recovered. Um, and pensioners traditionally invested in Italian banks, most of which are bankrupt technically. So it, it's a real, real massive problem. And I don't see an end to it. And I have always thought that the Eurozone would implode financially. And at the minute, I don't see any way out of it, other than what they'll do, they'll convert all the debt into a bond and a hundred year bond and kick the can down the road. And I confidently bet that the US and everybody else is going to do the same thing. So keep your eye on what's going on. Uh, think about what's coming. There is a shitstorm coming and you need to prepare for it. And the first priority is to have some cash, uh, have money to be able to get you through for a minimum of six months before you start going off and risking anything speculative. And don't be going out and buying things that you don't need. There is a famous expression is that the, the, the poor buy things and the rich buy assets. And that's the way you think about it. Ashley said, how would it affect the market if Pelosi visits Taiwan? Taiwan, I think everything would go into meltdown. If she goes to Taiwan, that would be the most insane thing of, of a year of insanity that I've seen. I can't for the life of me understand why they, they're going to rattle the cage. And there was another thing on Twitter this morning that was showing you in Moscow on one of the towers. There's a message uh, in Russian saying, China, we stand with you. Um, you know, you're poking the bear again. And historically, part of what's going on, well, yeah, Joan says she's supposedly en route at the minute. Uh, well, if she's telling the pilot where to go, it's maybe not a problem because she seems to be off her head to me most of the days when she talks. Um, but I, I, yeah, I don't understand the life of me. There's no common logical sense behind it it's insane i spoke about this before i mean the mike maloney and i shared with you a while ago about the russian uh, sorry an, an american professor who explained and mike maloney from goldsilver.com explained back in 2015 why pushing for ukraine to go into nato was a very very bad idea and Yet the American foreign policy and everybody pushed Ukraine. Ukraine became more confident. This is the reason why the Russians were I'm not justifying what they've done by any stretch of the imagination. But you think back to the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Cuban Missile Crisis in the early 1960s was because Russia was sending nuclear weapons to station them in Cuba, 50 miles off the US coast. Ukraine, if it became a member of, U of Russia, Russia were concerned that they then, right on their borders, would have nuclear weapons. And if you look at this map of Europe, at the end of the Second World War, Russia owned Estonia, Latvia, Riga, Lithuania, Belarus, still on side with them, the bit of Russia that they owned in Poland, that they took forever to pull out of, and they also covered here down to the Black Sea. And a lot of what's going on and has been going on when they annexed, annexed invaded Crimea in 2014, when everybody turned a blind eye and Germany still decided to connect up to Russia for gas, despite the fact that they'd invaded it, they wanted access to the Black Sea. And the Black Sea is a warm water sea. And the problem that Russia has, otherwise they are landlocked when it comes to the winter or certainly struggle because the Barents Sea is frozen 
and this sea here is clearly a difficult access route out and it's also freezes not not as bad as the Bering Sea so all of this is very very silly and yeah Pelosi I, if the Americans do that I, I really wonder as to the logic of anybody that's doing anything I mean what what do folks think in here anybody think there's a an upside to Pelosi going to Taiwan if she goes stick it in the chat box if you think if you have an opinion on it one way or the other so trading as ever, we watch the US dollar index. We've been watching this and paying very close attention to this since last year, uh, more than normal, especially when it broke 100. And as Grant, one of my private students the other day, did a very nice uh, presentation to me the other day. But clearly here, and this is what we look for all the time, we are looking for areas of probability where price is probably going to react. And we also stick a fib on here, so here you had multiple reasons to believe that if the dollar index came back down here, it was probably going to bounce. And the probability of a bounce was greater than not. If money flows back into the dollar, then it will flow out of the stock market and crypto. Whilst this has been dropping, money has been flowing back into riskier assets. All of that's covered in the website on the, on the topic of risk on and risk off, as you know. If this was to break and money flows out of the US dollar, then you could expect it to start to flow back into riskier assets. Until or unless this breaks, though, I would still be of a mind to buy dollars. But if this does break here and, start, and, and clearly breaks, I will convert my USD into metals. So that's my thinking. That's the barometer that we're using. One of the other barometers, I said to folks in my crypto site, uh, a while ago, I think I mentioned it to you guys as well, uh, that Berkshire Hathaway could be a bellwether of what's going on in the stock market. They're clearly very experienced investors. I think they've been profitable every year out of the last 50. They had billions, tens of billions of dollars sat in cash waiting for a crash. And all that we teach here at Mentor Pro is based around support and resistance. This was the level I said to folks in my crypto group, that would be the point to be considering if you if you didn't want to pay for a fund to manage your money and you didn't want to be doing all the work from a stock market, then that was an area to consider. That was a month ago. And as of today, that is up 12 percent. Doesn't sound a lot for those of us from crypto and Forex backgrounds, but in the stock market on a, a blue chip, then clearly that's quite good. So looking at what's going on at the minute, clearly this is a massive make your mind up area. And as a result of which, I also look at the stock markets, the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is in a clear down channel that has been going on since the beginning of the year. And there is also the intersection of the 200 EMA. So what I said to folks yesterday, if we get up here to 13,400, the probability is greater that it's going to drop than not. If it pokes through, I still wouldn't be convinced that this is a bull market because none of the data that's coming out and the fact that they're in a recession now, whether the American government have changed the name or not, is, is fact, then I just, for the life of me, would be completely unwilling to buy here. But there are people that will. Some people may make money. A lot of people are going to get slaughtered if they're not careful, because if this is a short squeeze, then it's quite likely to tank. So bottom line is keep your eye on multiple sources of data and information to build a bias of what you think is going on. This is the Dow Jones, Dow Jones index. Again, I have this major previous spot and resistance intersecting 200 EMA in a down channel. Clearly, this is a big, big area here. If it gets up to here, then I remember when we were doing this before, I'd advised a lady on options when uh, the Dow Jones was up here suggesting that 3550 was a take profit. And she made a lot of money. And if she'd stayed in it further, she made even more. But this is massive as well. So if we get through here, that would be the, the final line in the sand. If not, I'm wrong. And it's all going to the moon. But it's too risky for me. I'm just not for me. S&P 55 is rolling up. Clear down channel. 200 EMA is going to be an issue. Then the trend line. And then if we do go on a crazy run up, that would be a major one. US 100, you get the picture. US 100 is virtually the same as the NASDAQ and the US 30 is virtually the same as S&P. 
Euro stocks, I said the other week, I wouldn't touch Euro stocks at the minute. I think the Eurozone is, uh, I don't see a way out for them other than kicking the can down the road again. UK 100 didn't have as spectacular growth as the US economy and therefore didn't have a spectacular crash. Uh, again, I'd be very selective being in here. But this was the weekly 200 EMA on the UK 100 index. So if you are more aggressive, that was clearly an area to be looking to buy. I've just shown you Berkeley, Berkeley, Berkeley. I can't say the bloody word now, Berkshire Hathaway. Other things, crude oil, major, major previous support and resistance. If this drops, then clearly that would be good for inflation. So this is a major, major level as well. Bottom line, keep your eye on all of it. This is Apple. I say I sold half of my Apple yesterday. I showed you in the past I bought at 140. I then bought at 130. And then I had an order in at 122. And I've shown you other areas. These, these are what I class as a stink bid. 100, massive on Apple. And also what I've been showing folks is look back at where prices went in the COVID crash. If we go on a full blown recession, and if you are of a nervous disposition and just don't want to get involved yet, then these would be the areas, and especially here, that I would be all in on Apple. Amazon, I sold half of Amazon yesterday. I bought Amazon at 2000. Um, it, they've done a share split of 20, so now it was 100. And again, I showed you that if you go back to previous live sessions I did with you in January, February, March of this year, when price was up here, it was at 3,000 something, I, I seem to recall. I'd said to you that at 2,400, which was in here, it wasn't interesting enough for me. And the reason it wasn't interesting enough because it was only a possible 17, 20% back to the recent highs. The reason I liked this area is because now you're talking 80% potential gain. Now, I have closed half of it yesterday. I do want to hold some Amazon for the long term, but I'm up 36%. I have taken half out, so I've reduced the risk on the balance, and I've turned it into cash, and I would be waiting, hoping for a drop. If it goes off without me, I don't care. I've taken some profit. I don't buy into the idea of this being a, a recovery, and therefore, for me, I'm content to let it go. Bitcoin, I say, I bought, I showed you how I said to my crypto guys, I was buying at 2050, was it? Uh, I sold yesterday. It got to here. And a lot of the crypto tokens, are all, most of them are at a 55 EMA at the moment, this same pattern. So again, technically, it was clearly an area of resistance. I did buy some of this the other day. This is Chili's. This is, they, they actually... Uh, provide tokens for some of the major sports clubs around the world. Uh, it did actually shoot up about 20% yesterday. Come back down. What's it done? Look at this technical analysis that we teach you every day, every week for the last 15 years. It's just previous major support and resistance and a 200 EMA thrown in there for good luck. It was obvious it was going to struggle there. If this breaks and closes above here, and I would want it to do it on a weekly, but if it does and then pulls back, then I would be another buyer, further buyer. Ethereum is the silver to Bitcoin's gold. And I was explaining that I, I bought down at 10, uh, sorry, 1,050 and I sold yesterday at 1,670, something like. And it's, it's dropping at the moment. And again, why did it stop where it did? Major, massive previous support and resistance going back years. Okay. So none of this is rocket science. Euro USD, we'll look at that on the MetaTrader. Pound, same pattern as uh, a lot of the crypto at the minute. Shopify, this is a uh, stock I bought. I did buy some Shopify up here. I have bought quite a bit more down here and then taken a bit of profit out of it. But this is a good example of a COVID crash level. So here, after the COVID crash, is where it dropped to. Now, Shopify. If the world recession is on its way, if people are spending less money, Google and some of the other big advertising companies have announced uh, revised future profits because income from advertising is down, then Shopify will suffer equally. However, they've just announced they're going to uh, get rid of 10% of their 
uh, workforce and cut their cloth accordingly. But of course, if everyone is going to stop buying things they don't need, then they, as an inter internet provider gateway, are going to struggle like all the rest. If it went on a run back up here, I cost average out, I would get out of this now. I don't want to be in PayPal and Shopify at the same time. This is silver. Sorry, this is gold. And uh, this is the level I have shown you for years. And I bought gold at 1820 recently. I showed you, I can't remember where we were in here. And I said to you, if it gets down anywhere near this 1670 area, 1700, I would be a definite buyer of gold. And that is currently up. Uh, 5% in the last week. So it's a nice bounce. Platinum, uh, silver rather, I showed you on MetaTrade, I'll show you that in a moment, that why 17 and 18 were the big areas. Platinum, I bought a bit of this recently. I bought the first lot in here, bought some more down here. Nikkei, this is interesting. The Nikkei, suddenly the Japanese yen is starting to strengthen. The Nikkei looked as though it was going to break out. It faked out and moved back inside its range. Japan's financially screwed anyway so none of it all of it's a joke tesla today and yesterday where did tesla stop where is it struggling at the moment and again i wouldn't be in a rush to buy tesla now here i was a buyer of tesla and again my strategy is the potential reward was 70 80 90 percent here the reward is not as great and you have to think on if the chip situation is getting worse if pelosi goes to taiwan and Taiwan and the Chinese kick off about Taiwan. Taiwan still produce most of the chips that are used in computers and cars. Uh, there was a big hoo-ha last week because it turns out that her husband has 8 million NVIDIA shares, which I think he sold. Um, but if, if China was to form a blockade, shall we say, and they have changed their laws recently to say that the South China Sea near to Taiwan is theirs, and therefore they are saying that legally they are allowed to do a blockade. And I read an inter interesting article about that yesterday. Rather than a full-blown invasion, they could blockade Taiwan. If that happens, then Tesla is going to be screwed, on top of which if people haven't, are not earning as much money, and as I said to you earlier, my strategy is not to buy things. Don't go out buying cars that are likely to just lose value. Uh, final ones down here. This is uranium. I showed you this a long time ago. I bought some more the other day. I uh, got it in a cupboard under the stairs. No, I don't. It's highly radioactive. I made that up. Uh, <laughs> but I bought in here. This was a good place to buy for me. Uh, Zoom, I've shown you before. Again, I bought Zoom at 100. I bought some more at 90. I have taken profit a couple of times when we got to 120. Um, again, I, I the, the reason I bought Zoom is that the potential for this is for it to be, I think it's five, six, seven hundred percent to where it was previously. Uh, if we go into recession, people would not need offices as much. If COVID is an issue again this winter, and on top of which, I'm still using Zoom. Lots of people still use Zoom. I think this was a silly overreaction. If it was to go lower, then you, you pick a pick a level because this is this was the COVID drop down here, and then obviously it benefited from COVID. So. Zoom, I'm, I'm quite happy to keep on with. And somebody asked me to look at Microsoft the other day. Look at Microsoft. What's it done yesterday and today? It stopped bang on 200 EMA and a trend line. And once again, I would not be in a rush to buy anything here. Any questions on stocks and things that we've had a quick look at now? In fact, it wasn't a quick look. I'm going to just quickly have a look at some others. Um, these are stocks that I have bought and um, Apple I've shown you. These are some of the mining stocks that I've bought. Again, these are the levels I've been looking at to buy more. And uh, NVIDIA, I say I have some NVIDIA. I would be thinking to take profit on NVIDIA if you get up to 200. PayPal, I'm in probably now at cost average. Rig, thanks to a friend. Um, yes, Rig, this is the one. This is a friend of mine who is in the oil industry i showed you this the other week we first bought at 420 i then bought at 320 i bought at 280 and i bought at 250 last week so more or less now i think i'm, I'm about break even the advantage of this 
is that these are this is a company that owns the rigs that extract the oil. So to buy petrol shares and oil in oil company shares at the minute at the peak, especially if there's a recession coming, then that's not the best value to me. But this does have the potential to make more. Yes, it's speculative, uh, but it's it's using somebody else's knowledge of that industry. So that's why we're into that. So hopefully it answers that for you, Miguel. Rolls-Royce, shown you this before, the engine maker, and they also make mobile nuclear reactors. Um, bought some of this the other day. This is Sibania Stillwater. This is uh, mining in South Africa. Uh, and again, I, I bought some in here before the gap drop, I think it was. Shopify, as shown you earlier. Tron Ox Holdings. I have bought some more, and I have another level down here. Have an alarm set at 1350. Uh, this one is my a, a dog for me. This is the worst one. I have cost average down, so I, I think I'm down 20% on this now. I initially bought in here, and it was a bad idea on reflection. But anyway, I'm trying to cost average my way out of it, and that'll be the end of it. If not, I'll just take the hit. I think actually now I'm only down about 7% on this, so I was watching it yesterday. Uranium Energy Core, I think we looked at that before. Uh, wheat and precious metals. I did buy some more of this the other day. Uh, this is a, a major area at the moment as well. And we've looked at Zoom. All right. Any questions before we go on to Forex? And then we have Ashley waiting in the wings to do his bit on Earth and Sky. I just need to go have a quick sip of my tea, which is now gone cold. Right. Um, can you see my MetaTrader? Somebody say yes, please. Yes. Thank you. Uh, right, this is US index. We had a look at this before. This is on a weekly chart. We can see it's been a parabolic move. Somebody asked me the other week about uh, trend lines and uh, what you do when things move. You move them. So this was the original trend line because remember you need two or three points of contact. Uh, then you would have adjusted it here to allow for there were more contacts here. But then now be mindful of this because if it does go on a big drop, that's just around 100. And you've got there the weekly 55 EMA, as we saw on the daily. But in general, if well, the, the principle is if it moves, then make the trend line more relevant. And then you go to there, which is why we've ended up what we have on the daily that we looked at before. The daily USD index, as I said to you previously, that was a clue to buy the USD Swissy. VIX, uh, fear index drop. Now it's going back up again. It seems to be completely irrelevant to what goes on in the world. S&P we've already looked at. Gold, this was the line I'd shown you for years, literally, and said to you, this was where I wanted to buy gold. And on top of that, you've got the 200 EMA as well. So that is something I'd flagged to you a long time ago. I showed you the other week how the RSI was a clue, because in general with this one on the daily, when the RSI uh, breaks 30, it usually bounces back. I grabbed the shovel, said Phil. Yep. And then silver. I watch the silver. I watch RSI more on a weekly. Seems to be more accurate. Look at the bounce he had here. That time, smaller bounce here, uh, smaller bounce here. And then I was showing you last week that this was now coming down to 30, which is what it's done. Again, massive area of previous support and resistance. Uh, it, again, this could get dragged down. The crazy thing was with the COVID crash that gold and silver tanked at the same time as the stock markets, which was completely opposite to what normally goes on. But if it drops further, as Phil says, yes, grab the shovel. You want to be filling up your boots. Natural gas. Uh, peaked the other week, which is a bit bizarre in the middle of the summer, but that was to do with the Russians turning it off. And then we also have got oil, which we just looked at. Looks as though it might be on for a drop. And if it is, the big area for oil to be looking for a potential bounce would be 82. And obviously at the minute, first area is here with the 55. So how do we tie all this together that we've looked at? We're gauging what we think is going on at the minute. We're looking at the dollar index. I had this order split in two and it missed the bottom one by a bloody pip by the look of it, four or five pips. And because uh, unfortunately, then we would now be in profit on these two trades past break even because it's a smaller stop on this order. This is only 40 odd, and the other one is a 70 pip stop. Uh, but that came about from the US index. 
And then on top of which, you've got 61.8 FIB, EMAs, et cetera, et cetera. I think we also have a trend line in here on the daily. Uh, multiple reasons to believe if it's going to bounce anywhere, it's probably going to bounce there. Uh, does it mean it's going to win? Of course not. It's all now in the lap of the gods. It's all random. But that was the area. It's done 63 pips today and the average is 80. So we might not see much more movement. Uh, but that is what I've used all the data I've just shown you for to take the trade. Now, this is Euro Aussie. Uh, we've done this this morning with one of my students. He was looking to take this. We've forgotten to put a stop in on this one. Uh, the stop needs to go here, just above the recent high. Let's go on to the daily here. So we need to put the stop above the whole number and above the 55 EMA. So let's do that now. And that needs to be at 148.20. What am I talking about? Okay, so the potential for this is risking 50 for a potential 200 pip drop here. So that is interesting. And the euro news today, you would have thought with the German retail figures coming out that that would be not a positive for the eurozone. And therefore, the bias is still that we're thinking that the euro is going to drop. Euro New Zealand, I know some of you had uh, a decent win, I think, on a, a long on. Oh, no, Euro Aussie, I think, one of my guys. I've got an order in up here. Uh, difficulty with this, I would I was wanting really to enter here, but I've got the order in at 164.90 and I've got the stop 70 pips away above the recent spike and above the bunch of EMAs and, and above the 50% FIB. CAD, uh, I had, was in this last week, I think I had a loss on the CAD. Uh, again, the US index was a clue on this one. Uh, it didn't get down to the preferred entry, but it's bounced back up. Euro USD, uh, still, this is the long term uh, short from up here. I know some of you, quite a few of you, also got this one. So, in here, I'm, I'm not mad on this. It's one of my students this morning who liked this. Uh, and I actually, quite, a, I know quite a few of you do. It's not multiple reasons for me for the stop. And to go for the stop to be above the fib and the trend line is just miles away. The, but the the idea I understand the idea for the entry. The only other way to do this to deal with this is to put your, your entry all the way back up here. But it, it's not an A grade for me. Uh, Euro CAD A grade miles away. That needs to be adjusted down a little bit. There we go. Uh, Euro pound. Um, we have a sell limit ordering on here. Said the other week this was just too messy in here. Not for me at the minute. Now we've broken lower than you could, if you're trading this on a shorter time frame, also be looking around here. Uh, and this could be the start of a summer range. We'll cover that next time. Pound, USD. Uh, I, I, I don't want to buy it at the minute. I mean, it technically, it's broken the trend line. It's obviously been held down by the 55 at the minute. I No, I, I, I just, it doesn't feel right. Can't explain it any better. New Zealand dollar, the best place will be all the way up here. And Aussie dollar dropped. I know somebody had an order in, I think it's 70.50. I don't know actually if you caught it. I would prefer it all the way back up here. Multiple reasons for the stop. Pound CAD. Uh, uh, pound New Zealand. Again, this was one of my students. And yeah. This, this makes more sense to me than shorting. The shorting, the problem with the shorting here is that the stop, the spikes have been hundreds and hundreds of pips. Don't like that. Pound yen, against my better advice yesterday, uh, one of my students wanted to long this. I hate this pair and it got us again and it took us out. The yen's strengthening, guys, and therefore you, you really want to be thinking about shorting yens rather than longing at the minute. New Zealand, Swissy, miles away. AUD, you think we already looked at, and then we get into Aussie CAD like that. Aussie New Zealand, still waiting here. Uh, one of my guys pointed out this actually 110 does look interesting for the Aussie New Zealand now. So at 110, where are we going to put the stop? Um, 110, whole number, decimal 10, 
previous support and resistance in here. So it's in the zone now. So yes, I am tempted to have a bash at that one. Uh, we need to check on the news. Uh, it's already done 90 pips today. So it's quite probably run out of steam already. So that definitely would be the, the tip of the day. Aussie Swissy, miles away, pound Aussie, I want to pull back. Right. Um, Bill says, I have a potential triangle pullback heating up on the Euro Aussie daily. Let's have a look at that before we go over to Ashley. Euro Aussie daily. This is that yen, by the way. I know Ashley was looking to short this the other day. Uh, it was to be expected after such a big move. Where the heck is the Euro Aussie going? Euro was it to your left, Mark? I think. Mm -hmm. New Zealand. Oh, here we go. Right, now it's the left. So Phil has a potential triangle breakout on that one. Probably thinking. there to there my bias with this one is to long rather than to short if it broke and closed above here i would wait for it on a weekly i don't buy into the idea that the eurozone is in a good place yeah righty ho so let's go over to ashley in the uk if you have any questions you've got a busy week this week ashley what are you up to this week i'm getting my civil civil married this week he's getting married this week <laughs> just but i told him we could have the day off so i mean it's all good right, i need to stop sharing stop sharing okay right ash can you share your right. screen i'll share my screen uh can everyone see trading view yep cboe 10-year treasury yeah um i was just looking at this because i uh, remember like a month ago uh, i had said to you there's a head and shoulder pattern here Oh, yeah. And it seems like it has broken the neckline. Oh, yeah. um, so I don't know if that's dollar uh, dovish now, uh, but there's a clue here that it has broken the neckline, which I would yeah. put it down here. Um, but yeah. It's a but nice yeah. it's a nice clean head and shoulders as well, isn't it? I mean, often yeah. I don't spot them because, uh, yeah, but that's yeah. very There clear. is a tool that you can use here on oh, the right. um, trading view so you can do a left shoulder head okay and then that and yeah. then you would do that and then you see broken pullback and then now <clears throat> seems like it's want to drop but yeah technical point of view that is broken the neckline okay. um so this morning i was looking at the aussie um statement that they released so they raised the points by 50 and i was reading the statement and i just didn't seem to see a reason why it would drop because it's they had positive comments um on the aussie the economy is recovering and stuff they did say about the housing market slowing down and the prices of houses are dropping um, so i did a bit more research and then i used the news thing over here um for the aussie and I think over here somewhere uh hold on i'm not I'm on the aussie yeah um it's not this article but basically oh yeah this is the one so basically there was a comment in there that the governor said and it's to do with um they said they are going to rely on data going forward. So mm. they, they have given a clue that they might not raise rates uh, further on. And over here, you can see the most they could go out would be 2.6. Um, so that's probably why they're saying that the traders have taken the hint. And that's why the dollar has dropped. The Aussie has dropped against the dollar. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Trading view is quite good. 
um, you can use the news function here and you can do that with all your other setups as well. So if you go on the pound and then click the news function here, then you can see here is giving you all the news around with the pound. Uh, now with the Aussie um, technical point of view, I do prefer a long down here, uh, which is at 0.68760. Um, but at the same time, the dollar index is at a point where it could bounce, uh, like Mark was saying. So I would be a bit cautious on that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, technical point of view here, it looks quite attractive for a long down there. And then yesterday I was having a chat with Mark and I said to him, uh, if this breaks on the one hour, I said this line here, if it breaks and does a pullback on the one hour, it will shoot up. And it actually did that. Uh, but unfortunately, it did that uh, while I was sleeping. So <clears throat> I could I had the setup ready, as you can see, I was going to take it. Um, but it did that on the base of the Aussie statement. So that went up uh, 180 pips. So that was going to be a nice trade. But now what I'm saying is uh, I would wait uh, for a pullback to this region. So I would need to adjust my FIB and I would rather put it down here to the last high it made. And yeah, that would be my entry down there. And you need a 48 pip stop just below this high here. And then I would take that but I would wait for a pullback to this region. So if you look back on the four hour, you can see this region here, whenever it has broken out, it's come back, retested that region. So that's basically uh, why I would like to take a long down there. Uh, but yeah, that's the setup on the pound OZ. I do like trading the spare, but you can see for the past, I think this has been since March, it's just been consolidating in this region. So if you were taking shorts up here and longs up there, you would have been profitable. Um, going on my trades. So I'm in the same trade as Mark on the USD C. So it is hovering around there. And the second trade I am in is the power, is CAD Swiss. Um, so I've taken half off on both of those trades. Uh, 0.50 on this and 0.50 on the other one. So you can see here multiple reasons why uh, I would have taken it. I have a 60 pip stop and I would get out of this. So last time I got around 140 pips out of it. So this time I've taken it again and I would get out in the same place for around 130 pips. Now for the <clears throat> uh, earth and sky setups. So None of them actually meet the rules, um, but they're all mixed. And what Pierre is doing is he's being flexible and he's just looking at major areas of support and resistance like he did last week in his post where he said it was a bit of a fruit salad. Um, so that's what that he means by that is just the indicators are mixed. They don't meet the rules, uh, but we have to use um, what we have learned from the M2 and imply that into the earth and sky. Uh, so if you're trading using the earth and sky setups, then here we go, CAD yen. So I've taken the FIB from there to here, and we have the region here at 104 and 105, 18. So I would prefer the short somewhere around here where the weekly pivot is and where all the EMAs are. So around you're looking around 60 pips. And then you could look to take your profit at 170 pips here at 102.88. And then you could take some off here if you have a big lot size on there and then take some off here as well at 280 pips. Then USD yen. So this one here, we have a region between 133.942 and 135.432. So I would prefer a short anywhere around here. That is quite a big um, stop loss. So you would need to be a little flexible with it. So there is a 
good area as well. 67 pips. And what you could do is just do a split entry. So if you want to take it near the pivot, then you would go around here. And if you want to take it around a little bit more conservative, then this area would make more sense. So you are doing around 70 pip stop, and then you have the weekly pivot to get through, uh, but your first target will be around 300 pips here. It is quite a slow pair, but recently it has been doing uh, quite a lot, as you can see here, 130 in the past month. Uh, with the Euro Yen then, this one, we're looking at a region at 136, 900 and 138, 277. So preferably, I would prefer to take the trade around here at uh, 137, 200 with a stop loss at around 50 odd pips. So stop loss around there, 137, 700. And you're looking to take a profit down here at your support. So 200 pips, so nice risk reward. At the moment, all the yens are dropping because the yen is quite strong. Uh, but so we have another one here, so pound yen. And you can see here, this is, that's the major region here. We have the weekly pivot, all the support uh, areas here and the EMA. So I would prefer to take the short over here, 163, 167. So around 74 pips and you're looking to get around 273 pips. Now you'll need to make up your mind <clears throat> among these um, four pairs. And we also had the Aussie Yen, but I, did, I just took it out because uh, if you have a look at it, it's just too far away and, um, sorry, Aussie Yen, look at it. It's just too far away, you'll see in a minute. Um, that was the move, so if you fib that, um, I don't see the Aussie coming back um, this week all the way up here, so I just took it out. Um, but on the M2, I believe market said the big area here for a long, I believe, was some, I don't have the EMAs here, but I think Mark had an EMA somewhere around here. Uh, but on my setup here, I don't see that. So I wouldn't advise you to take that. But I think it was 90, which was a psychological number and a whole number. So I think that's the area we're preferring for long. Uh, but for me over here is 82.950 for a long. So that's around 80 odd pips here for a stop. Uh, but not for me for a setup. And the last one we have is the Euro pound. So this one I quite like because I don't like risking too much on my trades. So you can take your first trade around here at the weekly pivot as an intraday trade. So around 20 pips stop, and you could be looking to get around 70 pips. If you wanna be more conservative, then you could go all the way up here, which we have on the M2, I'll come to you in a minute. So 30 odd pips, and then you can look to trade it back down for 130 pips. So the Euro pound, uh, I have the setup here at <clears throat> 0.84750. So I would put my stop around there, 34 odd pips, and you can see the 130 pips. So quite similar to the earth and sky. And that's all I have for this week, guys, on the earth and sky. Okay, thank you very much, Ashley. Uh, yeah, I'm not into the idea of buying any yens at the minute, so uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get involved in the Aussie yen. As I say one of my guys uh, wanted the pound yen. I hate that pair, and it bit me on the butt again. So 